All right, joining me on the line, Dr. Paul Thomas from Plum Health. He is a physician in the city of Detroit. Welcome to Daily Detroit. Thank you so much for having me on today, Jer. Great to talk with you. Absolutely. I mean, this is a big deal, COVID-19, coronavirus, all of that. And I want to make sure to keep our listeners in touch with what's going on. And, you know, we've been getting a lot of questions as of late, specifically around like, why is this such a big deal versus versus other types of sicknesses out there? Because it feels like this came on very quickly. I know that our inbox really started to fill up once the NBA season got suspended and it became very real for folks. What's the story here? Yeah, I think the biggest concern here is the, well, number one, it's a new virus. You know, you've probably had like a coronavirus or a rhinovirus in the past past. In fact, we all have, and that's like the common cold. Cold can come in different vectors, but this is a new coronavirus that's affecting people. And the concern here is how rapidly it spread um, in Italy, namely, and then the mortality. So the mortality for the, the flu, the flu that's going around this year is about 0.1%. So if, uh, you know, a hundred, a thousand people have to get the flu for one of them to die. Um, but for the coronavirus, the mortality rate is much higher. It's at three to 4%. And that might be a low number because we don't have really clear data from China. We only have really clear data from like South Korea and Italy. So there's been a couple of different responses to the coronavirus or COVID-19, and they have had markedly different outcomes for people. And I know you've got some data to to dive into this, and I think it sheds light maybe on why this quarantine is and these social distancing practices are so important. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I, th- I think that we need to look at different countries and their responses and to, in order to understand what's been going on. And the two examples I'll give are Hong Kong and Italy. I know Hong Kong, it's not a country, um, but f- let's start there. So they were very aggressive with their um, quarantine efforts, advising people to stay at home and not go outside and closing schools and things like this. And they were able to flatten the curve, meaning that there was no giant spike in infectious cases from COVID-19 or the coronavirus. On the other hand, Italy, uh, I believe, was a little bit less aggressive. And they reported um, in February 23rd that they had 100 or so cases. They said 76 confirmed cases on February 23rd. And um, just yesterday, March 11th, they reported 12,000 cases and 800 deaths. So the concern there is that if the United States or if our local governments don't enact uh, kind of firm quarantines or advising people to stay home, close school, um, stop large events or large gatherings, you know, like what the NBA has done, um, we could see a huge spike in cases. And the concern would be that if we had this huge spike in cases, we would overrun our hospital system and we wouldn't really be able to take care of everyone with the uh, COVID-19 or coronavirus, which is what has happened in Italy, where they're in effect rationing care uh, between people who could be treated, but they just don't have enough space. So it's kind of like the hospital system only has, it's kind of like a pipe. It's only got so much that it can take through it at any one given time. And if we put too much right. through it, we can't take, we can't handle all of it. Yeah, that's correct. And, you know, that's the concern is that if there are too many cases we don't have an infinite supply of hospital beds or hospital workers. Um, and, you know, there, we could overrun our service system and we wouldn't have enough beds or enough um, clinicians to take care of all the sick patients. So that's why it's so important to stay at home, quarantine, um, and, you know, not go out into public spaces if you're feeling ill. Are there certain, as I understand it, there are certain populations that are more, vulnerable to this than others, right? Yeah, that's correct. Just like with the flu, younger people are more vulnerable and older people are more vulnerable. And then additionally, if you have some sort of cardiopulmonary morbidity, like if you have a history of lung cancer or tuberculosis, or you have a coronary artery disease, or even like frequent pneumonias, you may be at a higher risk of 
mortality or dying from coronavirus. So what do you have anything because you're somebody who and I want to talk to you about this because you are on the ground dealing with folks on a regular basis. You know, you're, you're very much dealing with patients. What is it that you're sensing on the ground, the questions that 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 people have? And what, what do you tell them when they ask you questions about this? Yeah, I mean, let's start by saying that I'm a family medicine physician. I'm not an infectious disease doctor, but I'm a family doctor and I see patients regularly who come in with coughs and colds and the flu and now concern about the coronavirus. So my main job is to basically triage the folks who are coming in. And if you don't know the word triage, it just means help guide people to the best resources. So basically, if you're coming in with uh, a runny nose and, and a cough and some muscle aches, I might say, you know, stay at home, take some Motrin and uh, call me if you develop a fever. But if you're coming in with a fever and um, a, a cough and you recently traver, traveled to Italy or China or South Korea, um, I would probably send you to the emergency department for admission and testing. So, you know, and then most people are going to fall in, you know, with less severe symptoms. So my job is to diagnose them appropriately. It might be seasonal allergies. It might be the flu. It might be a common cold, or it might be, uh, in a rare instance, the coronavirus. We have not seen any in our clinic yet. So what would you tell people who, frankly, seem to have like a lot of gaps of information? And what kinds of gaps of information do you all have in, in the medical community as well? Because this is so new. Right. You know, I wish that there was a better rollout of information from the federal government and state government. I know that, you know, a state of emergency has been called, um, but there hasn't been a lot of clear communication on testing protocols, like who has the tests, where's the best place to send people to get tested. You know, for me, we're working, we've called the local emergency departments on our own and found out what their testing criteria is. So basically, if people are meeting that criteria who come into our clinic, we would send them off. But there hasn't been like a large scale coordinated communication effort, uh, both for individual patients or, you know, general public or for family physicians. Um, you know, those are the populations that I can speak for. But, you know, it's it's not been super clear on what's the best route to take care of folks in this. And then, you know, another thing that we have to talk about is capacity. Um you know, the United States I recently read has 800,000 hospital beds uh, to take care of folks who might be uh, sick. So we may very well exceed that capacity and we don't have the infrastructure or the ability to you know, build a new hospital uh, rapidly like we saw done in China. So, you know, there's a growing concern about, you know, how are we going to take care of people who may be affected with this? What are some of your baseline tips that you're telling your patients right now about what's going on and what people can do to make sure that they don't uh, or that they minimize the chance of contracting this? Yeah, first is don't go to large scale events. I think the state of Michigan released that you shouldn't go to any event if there's over 100 people there. Um, additionally, if you are sick, if you do have symptoms, uh, the best thing to do is stay at home and self-quarantine. Um, so like if you have a cough, um, uh, fever, chills, uh, muscle aches, et cetera, stay home. Do not visit elderly relatives or go to church or go to work because you could spread this to other people. Um, avoid any unnecessary travel. So if you know, you're know you planning a trip, it might be reasonable to scale back. I know uh, one of my friends had, had his flight refunded from Delta Airlines. So I think the airline industry is being proactive about this in that regard. Uh, the other thing you can do is if you're not sick, you can stock up on uh, essential items like food and other supplies for your home. So if you need to self-quarantine in the future, you have enough supplies to, to last for you know two to three weeks. And what kind of things from a medical perspective should you make sure you have in kind of that like first aid stock up? Well, if you have a thermometer, that would be helpful. Um, if you have some like antihistamines, if you have seasonal allergies that are acting up, you should have those on hand. Ibuprofen, if you have muscle aches um, or a fever, and then also like acetaminophen, also known as Tylenol, if you have um, a fever, those things can be helpful. Also just having 
fresh water, I don't think our water supply is going to be affected, but, you know, people who are sick, I generally advise them to drink plenty of fluids and rest and have a bland diet um, so that they can recover. Well, and that's one piece of news that actually came out of this early on that a number of city homes that had their water shut off or were about to have their water shut off, that's actually going to be stopped and those homes are going to be turned back on in the in the preparation of, of this all coming through the state of Michigan and the city of Detroit. It makes us think about a more coordinated response from local governments, state governments, and federal governments um, for the future. You know, I don't know if we're going to be able to do much in terms of government action right now to help people, but um, for future events, this should be a, a huge wake-up call for emergency preparedness around, you know, viral events or other uh, attacks or threats. For sure, for sure. Uh, Dr. Paul, where can people find you if they want to know more about what you're doing, uh, talk to you more, become a patient, that kind of thing? Yeah, sure. We're at the Plum Health Clinic, Plum Health DPC here in Corktown, Detroit. Um, You can give us a call at 313-444-5630 or go to our website, plumhealthdpc.com. And that DPC stands for direct primary care. Um, You know, we we work with our patients directly. and, And one of the ways that you can protect yourself and others is if you're sick, you should call your doctor or use some sort of telecommunication method to contact your doctor. That way, if you are sick, you're not spreading that to the office staff or other people who are more sick who are visiting the doctor. That makes perfect sense. Well, Dr. Paul, thank you so much for your time on Daily Detroit today. Hey, thanks for having me on, Jer, and stay safe, everybody.